In the world of viral videos and public freakouts, to me personally, air rage incidents are the most compelling. There's a bomb on this goddamn plane! If she takes me off, I'll blow the plane up! Yeah, it seems like every week the internet is blessed with a TikTok or YouTube clip showcasing a passenger completely melting down mid-flight. What you may not realize is behind these 10 to 15 second clips are entire stories, rabbit holes to explore, and aftermaths to examine. The first air rage incident that we'll be looking at today is one that most of you watching are likely familiar with, at least on a surface level. During the COVID-19 pandemic, many air rage incidents occurred, but none were as controversial and virally well known as the JetBlue Burger King incident. This Burger King crown wearing man has garnered quite the infamous reputation for himself. Call the police right now, I know you saw it. She beat me in the stomach. Excuse me, I'm part West African. I can say anytime I want. Bye. Kick the bitch off the plane. Sir, please You need to stop, there are children. Please stop. Hey, that's not necessary. Most of you may remember the racial tirade that he delivered on a JetBlue flight back in 2020. Over the years, the JetBlue Burger King guy has become somewhat of an enigmatic meme figure, with many curious as to what led up to his tirade and what became of the man after the fact. What you might be surprised to find is that there's actually quite a bit of lore surrounding this incident and the man responsible for it, Ryan Brewer. Ryan Brewer, originally from California, is a man with something of a mysterious backstory. What's known about Brewer prior to the racist BK incident comes from his online postings and anecdotal statements from alleged family members. It's said that Ryan is a man who struggles with mental health and has experienced much instability in his adult life. To further paint a picture of Mr. Brewer, one can look at old videos from a now defunct YouTube channel created by the guy. Videos uploaded to Ryan's channel are bizarre to say the least, and certainly jive with the notion that this man isn't the most put together guy. I was like, I was contemplating right now, I'm really fucking grumpy, and like the whole world is shit, and like, you know what the fucking reason is that you don't want to talk to me, Samantha? Because you're too fucking shallow. As you can see, I mean, as you can see, well, it talks anyway. <laughs> Samantha, Samantha, what a joke. Uh, hey, can you feel that? Watching these videos, you sort of get the impression of a guy that has something of a chaotic and lonely life. Interestingly, it would be loneliness that would inadvertently create the racist Burger King incident on a JetBlue flight. According to a report by a Jamaican news publication called The Den, the reason for Ryan Brewer even boarding a plane in the first place was so that he could meet up with a woman in Jamaica that he had met online using Facebook. According to reports, Ryan would invest a small fortune in getting a plane ticket to Jamaica and traveled there after being told by the woman they would get married. According to The Den and sources at the airport, this woman also requested money from Brewer so that she could begin preparations for a wedding. So Ryan, apparently desperate for companionship, allegedly gives this woman a thousand dollars, which proved to be a mistake. Yeah, as you might guess, the woman that he had talked to on Facebook, well, they took the money and never gave it back and he had essentially been scammed in some sort of, you know, honeypot scheme. There was no wedding, Ryan had been duped. After getting fleeced out of a thousand dollars, Ryan found himself broke and essentially stuck in Jamaica. Stranded, Ryan slept on beaches for a couple of days and scrounged up whatever money he could to buy food from a nearby Burger King, which would be of course how he got his hands on the now infamous BK crown worn during the incident that we'll discuss shortly. After being stranded, heartbroken, and homeless for a few days in Jamaica, Ryan Brewer would eventually find his way to the United States Embassy and there, government officials, feeling as if the man needed assistance, would in charitable fashion get him a plane ticket back to the United States. He was at his wits end by this point and compounded with his pre-existing mental health struggles, he was a powder keg on the verge of blowing. 
And that brings us to JetBlue Flight 1760, or the debut of Racist Burger King. On October 20th of 2020, Ryan Brewer boarded JetBlue Flight 1760, service from Kingston, Jamaica to New York City. The man boarded the plane wearing the now infamous Burger King crown that he got while homeless in Jamaica. Ryan would begin to cause problems literally moments after boarding the plane. During the process of seating, Ryan would grow antagonistic towards a fellow passenger. The exact reason for this altercation starting is disputed but reports say it had to do with the woman he was assigned to sit next to. A woman that apparently bore an uncanny resemblance to the Jamaican woman that allegedly scammed him days prior. The appearance of this woman seemingly triggered the man and sent the mentally unstable brewer into a spiral of anger. This fit of rage involved Ryan spewing racist and vitriolic comments at the innocent woman that was sitting next to him. It's also interesting to note that during this altercation, Ryan Brewer claims that he has West African ancestry, so he says that, I guess, to sort of preface the fact that he's about to drop a bunch of N-bombs later in this situation. Excuse me, I'm part West African. I can say anytime I want. I stepped over you. Bye. Kick that bitch off the plane. Sir, please You need to stop. There are children. Please stop. Hey, that's not necessary. Take your stuff and get out of my seat, please! Let's just say the verdict on that West African claim is still out. A scuffle between the two would be had off camera, with Ryan later alleging that she kneed him in the chest during this little spat. Call the f***ing police right now! I know you saw it! She kneed me in the stomach! Good. We're gonna contact them. Thank you. You need to... Here, this is up? my seat! Can you stand up? Where is 25A? Where is 25A? Why did she just knee me in the stomach? Because you deserve it. Yes, she did. Because you deserve it. Did you get that on camera? You deserve it. Now, Ryan would continue to become more enraged on this JetBlue flight to the point where he started screaming the N-word at the top of his lungs, and everyone at this point had their phones out recording. Yeah, I'll check him. Hold on. Hey, you know where I live? I'll give you my... You're a bunch of f***ing baddies, that's what y'all are, a bunch of f***ing baddies, that's what y'all are, every f***ing one of y'all. As he started letting the N-word rip more and more louder and louder, people actually started to get out of their seats and get physical with this guy. Many would stand up to confront Ryan, leading to an altercation between the man and a small group of passengers. The scuffle reportedly involved some pushing, shoving, and punches were also thrown at some point. Flight attendants would break up the brawl and detain Brewer back to his seat. Brewer, now under threat of being kicked off the plane, continued to verbally catapult a bombardment of slurs towards passengers. He would ignore anybody that tried to shut him up and he would yell shit out like, who's next, you know, challenging more people to come up and fight him. The guy was totally disorderly. Who's next, mother No, I'm not going to stop. He's an asshole and we all Who's next? You're done. You lost your bet. Who's next? I understand. You lost. Jamaican police would eventually get involved. You lost. Jamaican police would eventually be notified, and Ryan Brewer would soon after be detained by police and escorted off of the plane. And for the time being, he would be stranded in Jamaica again. The footage of this bizarre incident would later be published to social media by those on the flight. And due to Ryan's appearance, you know, him toting the Burger King hat and what he had to say on this flight, he sort of got the colloquial name of Racist Burger King. Many would sound off on social media, leaving comments chastising the man for his unacceptable racist comments. What they should have done is gone ahead and taken off and then had a tragic accident at 30,000 feet where the door mysteriously popped open and he fell out of it. Imagine everybody just saying fuck it and just throw bro off that motherfucker. Did he say that he has some West African and can say the N-word? That's some ballsy privilege with a Burger King crown on. These folks are exhausting. 
JetBlue would promptly respond to the incident, issuing their own comments to social media. We have zero tolerance for racism or harassment, and after reviewing this customer's abhorrent racist behavior, we have determined he is no longer welcome to fly JetBlue. As for Ryan, what few actually realize is that there was a second incident involving Ryan Brewer on an airplane that occurred shortly after he was banned from JetBlue. As Ryan would attempt to return back to the United States on an American Airlines flight and get into a another provocational incident. While this incident was nowhere near as egregious as the JetBlue one, there is footage showcasing the man disturbing a woman sitting in front of him, and apparently this altercation resulted in him being banned from American as well and sent back to Jamaica for a second time. Is that talking to him? You're not supposed to use that word in general. Okay. Don't say it then. You don't say it, the fuck? I'm gonna say whatever I want. It's called freedom of speech. Not okay. in this country. Not in this. Well, in Jamaica, it's called freedom of we'll expression. See, sir. Excuse we'll me, see. where you swing your braids, please. Okay. Swing your braids okay. all over. It's got COVID all over okay. it. Don't okay. swing your braids on okay. me. Please don't swing your COVID all I'm over not me. Not even moving. Like don't okay. swing your COVID on me, okay? I'm sitting right here. Yeah. Don't swing your COVID on me. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. The fact that Ryan is still wearing the Burger King crown in the second video has led many to speculate that he became aware of his status as an infamous viral meme and was essentially sort of trying to play into it, but it's impossible to confirm. What's actually kind of crazy about Ryan Brewer is that I cannot find any concrete proof that he ever actually made it back to the United States. While I can't really see a scenario where Ryan is still in Jamaica, hell, if the trend continued with him being banned from airlines back to back, I mean, it is theoretically possible that he's just like living on a beach somewhere. While while Ryan's whereabouts these days remain a mystery, what's clear is that the racist tirade he delivered will live on in infamy as people continue to post memes about this years later. What all began as a man allegedly getting scammed in Jamaica, that was the story of the JetBlue Burger King. Before our next story, a brief message from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Keeps, and to begin the ad, let's look at my hair from some old videos back in 2020. Yeah, as you can see, your boy was losing hair and losing it fast. I didn't want to go bald, so I decided to do something about my hair loss and got started with Keeps, and the results have been pretty insane. Here's me at six months after starting Keeps. A year after starting, two years after starting, nearly three years after starting, and then there's me right now. And if I'm being honest with you guys, if I never got started on Keeps, I'm pretty sure the situation up here would be a bit more dire. Keeps offers generic versions of the two FDA approved hair loss products at a can't beat price, and best of all, you skip the trip to the doctor's office and pharmacy. Keeps will set you up with a prescriber online and ship your prescription right to your front door, and in four to six months, you should start seeing results. Look, I stand by Keeps. I've been using this stuff for most of my YouTube career at this point. Uh, if I never started it, I'm afraid I would probably be half bald, but yeah. If you're a guy out there that's having some anxiety about hair loss, there's no better time than now to start Keeps. Hair loss stops with Keeps. You can go to keeps.com slash wavy to take advantage of their special offer or click the link in the description. Easily the most disgusting air rage incident on this list involves a man airdropping an entire plane, a photo of his cock and balls. The story all begins on June of 2022 on a Southwest Airlines flight from Detroit to Denver. A woman named McKenzie would receive an airdrop request from an unknown contact on the flight. Not thinking much of this request, she accepted it and was horrified to find that somebody on this plane had sent them a photo of their genitalia. Disturbed, violated, and feeling sexually harassed, Mackenzie did her best to keep her cool in the moment. She wanted to expose this sick freak that sent the material, so she kept cool and did some detective work, kind of looking around to see if she could find somebody that fit the bill of somebody that, you know, would send a dick pic to random people on a plane. And that's when her gaze fixed on a passenger sitting directly across the aisle from her, a bald, overweight, middle-aged man who was suspiciously operating an iPad, the man looking up from the tablet every now and then at other plane riders, almost as if he was like, checking the reactions of people, if you know what I'm saying. Feeling as if this man was the dick pic perpetrator, she confronted him. 
asking if he was the one responsible for sending the penis airdrop. And bafflingly enough, the man, who identified himself as Larry, would candidly admit to sending the photo to her. And he would further explain that he sent it to several other people on this plane, as a funny joke. Meet Larry, who just airdropped a whole flight photos of his peepee. Thankfully, I accepted it, saw who was sending it, and immediately started speaking up. Mackenzie was sickened and infuriated by this response. She started chastising and putting Larry on blast in front of everyone, exposing him for what he did. Flight attendants took note of the unfolding confrontation, and around this time, Mackenzie would begin recording video of it with her phone. This video showcases just how disgusted the woman was in the moment. Harassment, it is insanely disgusting, it is assault. And you can also kind of gauge the passengers and flight attendants' reactions to this creep as well. Initially feeling as if sending these unappreciated dick pics was no big deal, Larry would eventually issue a half-hearted apology after a lot of pushback from those on board. But I say half-hearted because McKenzie would later report that after initiating this apology, the man would go right back onto his tablet and McKenzie claims he was like looking and pulling up pictures of his dick and, you know, just ingratiating himself in this content still. We look at Larry's iPad. It's been like two minutes and he's looking at the pictures again on his iPad. There's a, like a child, like seven-ish maybe right behind him and a teenager right behind him and he knows that. She certainly felt like the guy had no remorse and even speculated that it was a kink for him and he was getting off on the attention. As a result of the airdrops, Larry, who was later identified as Texas man Lawrence Martin, was arrested upon landing and taken into police custody. McKenzie would later publish her video recorded on the plane to TikTok and create other videos discussing the story. McKenzie claimed that some of the flight attendants were negatively impacted by Larry's photos and that some minors were potentially even exposed to it. As according to her, there were literally children sitting behind Larry on the flight. Mackenzie's TikToks would go viral, her videos receiving close to 2 million views in a matter of days. Disgusted commenters would chime in. Literally, like flashing in public but with technology. How is that for fun? I have never understood humans that send photos without consent. I hope he is in trouble for a long time. Thank you for turning him in. Who knows what else he would have done or has done. I would have jumped off the plane mid-flight. He looks so casual and relaxed. In addition to being arrested, Larry now found himself under investigation by various internet sleuths, who promptly dug up social media associated with him to roast him personally. Fifty Shades of Way says, This disgusting piece of shit Lawrence Martin said he was having a little fun when asked why he sent dick pics to everyone on the plane. It's no wonder he's divorced. They arrested his dirty ass after the flight and he deserves to be on a sex offender registry. The user attaches some not so flattering images of the man. In the wake of McKenzie's viral video showcasing the incident, Southwest Airlines put out this statement. We can confirm that this unfortunate incident occurred on a recent flight from Detroit to Denver. Our flight attendants immediately addressed the situation and the crew requested local law enforcement officers to meet the flight upon arrival, which they did and subsequently apprehended the individual responsible. Southwest Airlines maintains zero tolerance for this obscene and unacceptable behavior, and we offer our sincere apologies to the other customers on board. While I'm unable to ascertain the specifics regarding Larry's charges, I would imagine a public indecency, and considering that there were children on this flight, I wouldn't be surprised if he got hit with something like sending indecent material to the underage. Whatever the case, it's fortunate that this sick individual got put on blast publicly. And hopefully other airlines take notice of what he's capable of. Easily the most notorious air rage incident in recent memory, it's time to talk about the that mf -er is not real lady. If you've spent any amount of time on the internet in the last year, you are likely very familiar with this bizarre video. And there's a reason why I'm getting the fuck off and everyone can either believe it or they cannot believe it. I don't give two fucks, but I am telling you right now, that motherfucker that motherfucker back there is not real. And you can sit on this plane and you can fucking die with them or not. I'm not going to. 
While most know the now infamous line uttered by this woman, few are actually aware of the entire timeline of events and the massive rabbit hole surrounding this incident. So what caused the that motherfucker is not real incident and who is the woman behind it? What led up to all of this? And what happened to her? And who exactly is the motherfucker that this enigmatic woman is telling? Uh, that they're not real. This story all begins on July 2nd of 2023 as American Airlines Flight 1009 is preparing to take off from Texas en route to Florida. As the plane was beginning the takeoff process and leaving the terminal, passengers began to notice a peculiar woman near the back of the plane experiencing a sort of, uh, episode of sorts. A bit of a perplexing confrontation was breaking out. A frantic and paranoia stricken looking woman began raising her voice towards a male passenger near her seat who was apparently minding his own business. The woman was going on about how she felt unsafe and that everyone else on this flight was unsafe as well and something bad was about to happen. Despite nothing out of the ordinary taking place, the spectacle continues to escalate and the woman seems to become even more frightened as as the plane starts taxiing forward. I'm getting the fuck off. I'm getting the fuck off because no, I'm getting the fuck off. Because there is a stupid fucking dude on here. No. So the moment the plane starts moving, this woman just kind of goes batshit. The woman starts screaming for the plane to be stopped and demands to be let off immediately. When another passenger attempts to calm her down, she reportedly shoved this individual. And yeah, at this point, several passengers had pulled out their phones and they were filming this lady losing it. Flight attendants unsuccessfully tried to calm her down as she speaks in a cryptic fashion, issuing these vague remarks about the flight being unsafe. This plane. Which in turn made everyone else on the flight feel kind of worried because, you know, they start asking themselves like, hey, wait a second. Is this woman crazy or is she actually on to something? Like, is there something that we need to know about here? According to a report from the legendary comedian Carrot Top, who just so happened to have been on this plane sitting in first class, yes, you can't make this shit up, this woman caused the plane to have to taxi back to the terminal and she was then removed. What's funny about it was when I sent, when someone during the eight hour layover because of this woman, we were all sitting in Dallas and someone, one of the people on the plane had videotaped it. So they came over and said, um, do you want to, I said, what you have the tape? Give me, oh my God, I'll, I want to like post it and, and just say, you know, and, but it, before it became this thing, it wasn't huge yet. It was just <laughs> this little thing. And I, I said, you know, I was going to make the fireworks, but I'm not going to now because of some, I said some nut job lost her mind on the plane. So I'm going to miss the fireworks. And then it became in Nash, beyond national news. But when I sent it to my friend, the video, first thing he says is, you're in coach? I'm like, no, I'm not in coach. <laughs> no, I'm not. And it would be when the woman was walking off the plane to the terminal that the now infamous line regarding MFers not being real was delivered. She points to a man at the back of the plane, says that motherfucker is not real, and that everybody on board was in serious danger. But I am telling you right back there is not real. A recording showcasing the incident briefly pans to the direction of the alleged not real MFR, and when the camera turns, all one sees is a collection of seemingly normal passengers. After issuing her ominous warning, the American Airlines Flight 1009 doomsayer would finally deplane. There would be a moment of peace. Because of the uneasiness caused by this woman's tirade, the entire flight was deplaned as well, as the plane had to be sweeped for any potential abnormalities or threats. Nothing was found and the flight was later deemed safe for takeoff. Meanwhile, the crazy plane lady was inside the airport being interviewed by security. And even while off the plane, the lady still expressed concern that the flight wasn't safe and she was worried that people were going to die. She insisted that the MFR who wasn't real had sinister plans in store for all on board. Video recorded inside of the airport terminal showcases the plane lady saying that the airport should not let the flight leave because it's going to blow up. I want to know what happens to this flight right here. Can I go to Scarlet Atlanta? So just let me hear it without me. Great. I don't ever want to fly with you ever again. Let that flight leave. Do not let that flight leave. Being dead serious. Do not let that flight leave. 
I do not let that flight leave. That flight's not going to make it to Orlando. Let's it's go. It's not going to. Oh yeah, until y'all see that flight f blow up. Okay. This statement in particular made security and airport staff quite uneasy, and as a result of this woman's actions, the flight to Orlando was delayed for a total of three hours. Needless to say, this woman was not allowed back on, though. Body cam footage shows additional bits of the aftermath of the plane lady incident. Officers would go on to interview the man who was initially shoved on the plane by the plane lady. No, it's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, she just <laughs> pushing me like... Why, why? You are the part of the. Uh, oh. I don't know what she, who's talking to the in the phone. Okay. So I was just sitting right here, and she just got me. Did she say anything before that to you? Uh uh. No. No. And the plane lady herself would later be confronted outside of the airport as she was waiting for an Uber. When confronted, she got argumentative towards these officers, stating that she was too small to do any damage to the guy that she pushed. Okay. I'm five hold two, on, wait, hold on, hold on. on. I'm okay. five two, 120 pounds. Okay, can you let five me two, 120 pounds. Can you let me finish? Yeah. So the gentleman is not wanting to press charges, okay? <laughs> okay. okay? Okay. So regardless, he's not wanting to press wait. charges. Hey, could I hurt okay. you? I will tell you. I'll so tell you. Being said, I'll tell just you. Just listen to the officer. Could I hurt you? So listen to the officer. Said. Exactly. She didn't appear to feel like she had done anything wrong, but in all honesty, she's like out of it, it seems. She wasn't arrested or charged with any crimes and would be let go, and for the time being, the plain lady incident was resolved, but the story is far from over. As those on the flight would later go on to upload the bizarre crazy plain lady footage to TikTok, Twitter, and other social media platforms. Thanks to the woman's disturbing outbursts and eyebrow-raising claims of a MFR on the flight not being real, it was an instant viral hit. I mean, admittedly, the video is very strange. Like, on the surface, it's your classic crazy Karen-style video. But as you watch it more and more, there's like different layers that are almost unsettling to it. It seems like something else is at play here. Like maybe she's actually the sane one and everyone else was crazy. Like what did she really see on that flight? Was there lizard people or something? Did she see through the matrix? Is she Neo? Like what's going on here? Media outlets would latch onto this viral story, portraying the woman in it as a paranoid schizophrenic of sorts who was convinced that she saw some sort of monster that wasn't there on the plane. It wouldn't be long before the nickname Crazy Plane Lady or That mf -er is Not Real Lady was all over the place. Conspiracy theorists would join in as well, creating explanations for what exactly she saw. Was it a shapeshifter? an alien, or something else supernatural? Perhaps the plane lady was a government psyop or some sort of demonic entity. Hell, if you spent five minutes on TikTok, you'd be convinced that the woman was possessed by the devil. Look at that, you can see she's clearly holding up the Baphomet demon symbol, dude. The possibilities for what she could have saw were endless, and a lot out there thought this was like the big enchilada for seeing through the fourth wall of the universe. The plane lady was just the tip of the iceberg. We were about to discover like, you know, stranger things, interdimensional beings here. Some YouTube comments under the video. In some years, we owe her an apology. Mark my word. People are hating on this lady. It's very obvious she is scared. She is scared for her life. Person or not, she saw something traumatizing, even if she hallucinated it. Imagine having a gut feeling the plane wouldn't land. Imagine knowing that you were not safe, that that person was going to do something. People need to have some empathy because there was clearly something happening to this poor girl. Keep in mind, she went through TSA. They would have stopped her if she had drugs. She saw a shapeshifter. As people scrambled to find answers in regard to what was going on with the crazy plane lady, some who were allegedly on the same flight as her would come forward with stories attempting to further contextualize the event. One alleged passenger, who goes by the name M. Lee R.N. on TikTok, would post a clip reporting various details from the confrontation involving the plane lady. Okay, so for everybody who has seen the viral video of the crazy lady they got kicked off the American Airlines flight yesterday going from DFW to Orlando. 
I just kind of wanted to clear up some things because there's a lot of people that have a lot of questions. It's important to note that this individual's statements cannot be treated as fact, and we should certainly handle them with a grain of salt in mind. This is just some random person who claims to have been on the flight's perspective of what happened. This woman boarded the plane. We left the, um, the terminal, and we were pulling out onto the runway, fixing to take off, and all of a sudden, so this lady had been drinking prior to getting on the plane, evidently. Um, some people said they'd seen her at the bar next to the terminal. She um, was sitting in her seat, and I, I guess she had a pair of uh, AirPods, and um, they said she had them in her hand, and then within seconds, we don't know if she pocketed them or where she put them, she misplaced them somehow, and she started uh, yelling at the guy next to her, who of course is African American, and uh, saying that he stole her AirPods. According to M. Lee R.N., the plane lady dispute initially began as a result of the woman losing an AirPod and becoming paranoid that a man sitting next to her had stolen it. The TikToker would also explain that the MFer who was not real that the plane lady was referring to was the flight attendant that initially responded to the altercation. Oh, and I've heard a lot of questions, people wondering who she was saying didn't exist. The person she was saying did not exist was the flight attendant who originally was dealing with the complaint whenever she started yelling and screaming about the guy supposedly stealing her, supposedly stealing her AirPods. Now let's entertain the hypothetical that this TikTok lady was in fact on the plane and that her claim is true about the first flight attendant to come in contact with the plane lady was the MFer who is not real. If that's the case, then I believe that the MFer who is not real is this flight attendant right here. As out of all the footage that I've seen of the incident, it appears that he was the first flight attendant to make contact with her. So yeah, for those of you wondering, that could be the MFer who was not real. We don't know for sure. One of the more strange elements to this story is the fact that despite the plane lady being a globally popular meme of sorts, the crazy plane lady's identity remained a complete mystery for quite some time. The woman's name wouldn't be discovered until early August, almost two months after the MF or is not real incident. The crazy plane lady would eventually be identified as 39 year old Tiffany Gomez, a marketing industry worker and real estate agent from Dallas, Texas. Shortly after her name was made public, Tiffany would finally come forward and issue a statement to the internet and the media. This statement came in the form of an apology video that was published to Twitter. In this apology, the woman took accountability for her behavior and apologized for her use of profanity. She also apologized to the passengers on board and got a bit emotional at times during this speech. Hi everyone, it's me. Tiffany Gomez, probably better known as the crazy plane lady, which is completely warranted. As you know, I have been unwilling to speak on the viral video, but I do finally feel that it's time. First and foremost, I want to take full accountability for my actions. They were completely unacceptable. Distressed or not, I should have been, I should have been in control of my emotions and that was not the case. My use of profanity was completely unnecessary and I want to apologize to everyone on that plane, especially those that had children aboard. Can't imagine going through that and trying to explain to your kid what in the world just happened. We all have our bad moments. Um, some far worse than others, and mine happened to be caught on camera for the whole world to see multiple times. Sorry, I'm trying not to sound like Minnie Mouse. Um, and she also said that she enjoyed some of the memes that came out of the situation. Well, it has been really comical for everyone, um, and I have highly enjoyed so many of the memes. On the flip side, it is very invasive and unkind, and I don't know what I would do without the love and support of my friends and family. While it was good to hear from the plain lady herself, the burning question that everyone had wanted Tiffany to explain was what exactly she saw on the plane and why exactly was she so upset about it? 
Who was the motherfucker that wasn't real? I mean, come on, you gotta explain it, right? Her vagueness regarding the matter in the Twitter video fueled more conspiracies. Some suggested that she was being coached to keep quiet on what had happened and that she was under threat by government bodies or the deep state. Others had more rational explanations like, you know, maybe she's being advised by legal counsel to not be too specific because she doesn't want to like inadvertently cause damages to anyone on the plane. And of course there were people suggesting that she may have had a psychiatric illness and the mf -er is not real incident was essentially a lapse or exacerbation in her illness. And, you know, she's kind of trying to tap dance around this in a way, not having to say like, guys, I, I had a mental breakdown because... You know, that, that's almost like TMI. Like, she doesn't have to do that if that's the case. I don't know if she has a mental illness, but that's just, like, kind of my thoughts there. Another theory I've seen floating around speculates that given Tiffany had experience in marketing, her freakout was some sort of scheme to become a viral influencer. And, I mean, I guess if you're, like, a fucking idiot, this is a good theory, but, like, I can think of 10,000 better ways to approach being an influencer than this. Like, yeah, dude, everyone thought I was literally insane for two months. Totally the best way to become famous online. I totally want it to happen that way. Shortly after issuing her apology, Tiffany would be spotted at an airport by paparazzi. There she would participate in a brief interview in which the interviewer asked what exactly she saw. Tiffany in return would answer that she had been told that she can't comment on it at the moment, but she did plan to speak further in the future. The only details that she really gives here is that she was distressed at the moment and really felt like she needed to get off the plane. Like, what was the reason that you wanted to get off so bad? Um, again, can't speak on that right now, but um, I was distressed and I was getting off the plane no matter what. I just probably didn't need to make the scene that I made. Right, um, right, right. But I was getting off that plane. Since coming out public, Tiffany continues to speak in a limited capacity regarding her incident. In my opinion, the woman is likely being instructed by PR and legal professionals to keep somewhat hushed on the matter to limit her exposure and potential civil lawsuits. What initially began as the nightmare for the plain lady has become somewhat of a boon for Tiffany Gomez, as the internet has been quite accepting of her since she came forward, with the woman now boasting quite the large following on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok following so large that they are likely monetizable. And again, no, I don't think she did this on purpose to get famous online. I think it's just like a side effect of all of it. It also appears Tiffany has collaborated with Barstool Sports to make some That mf -er is Not Real merchandise. And speaking of Barstool, Tiffany somewhat recently went on Barstool's Pardon My Take podcast. And for the first time ever, she would answer the question of what exactly she saw. Or who wasn't real. And I do the little quote thing because in the answer, she said that she saw absolutely nothing. And that when she said that mf -er is not real, she was essentially referring to somebody on the plane that wasn't being real with her. Like, I guess the person she had a confrontation with, she was saying that they were being fake or bullshitting her. Can I ask again what you saw? Yeah. You know, the reason why I probably haven't come out yet, because it's like so cringe, um, I did not see anything what i mean i think y'all knew that <laughs> okay i we honestly had no idea yeah you said you did no i did not the Those media you said this motherfucker is not real I said that motherfucker i mean the body language doesn't really line up but sure tiffany i think there will be a day when we do get the full story regarding what exactly was going on with tiffany gomez on this flight personally in my opinion just looking at everything surrounding this case and the videos just off of my layman's opinion like i'm not a psychiatrist i'm not a psychologist I am a registered nurse, but I have no experience in diagnosing anybody's mental problems. But this does kind of seem like she had some sort of lapse, a delusion, maybe a bipolar manic episode. That's what it looks like to me. But who the fuck knows? One day, I hope Tiffany will come forward and explain what she saw in honesty and, uh, but for now, we're just gonna have to wait and find out. So that is the story of Tiffany Gomez, the, that motherfucker is not real lady.
When an air rage incident occurs after takeoff, there's limited options for subduing a potential aggressor. I mean, really, what are flight attendants to do in a situation where you got a fucking crazy passenger that's throwing bows? After all, you're thousands of feet up in the air, and a plane is not like a cruise ship. There's no brig or drunk tank to throw hooligans in. But fear not, there is a way to subdue dangerous passengers on a plane thanks to the creative efforts of flight attendants over the years. Many videos have gone viral showcasing the tactic that flight attendants use. Which brings us to the cases of duct tape passengers. On late Saturday night, July 31st of 2021, 22-year-old Maxwell Berry of Norwalk, Ohio boarded the Frontier Airlines Flight 2289 from Philadelphia to Miami. While on this flight, Mr. Maxwell reportedly partaked in a few alcoholic beverages. At some point during this flight, the drunken man reportedly began getting a bit unruly, cursing at other passengers. The guy was causing problems on on this flight and whenever people started criticizing him he reportedly said that he had rich parents and could do whatever he wanted to a real piece of work here my parents are reporting goddamn gallons you know what you fucking yeah 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 you what my grandpa is reporting <laughs> Maxwell continued being disrespectful to flight attendants demanding beverages despite being cut off. The unruly man at one point went to the bathroom and emerged shirtless. Apparently he had spilled a drink on himself when he was in there and thought it was appropriate to just come out, you know, half naked. And for the most part, flight attendants, despite the rudeness of this man, they were keeping their cool. Hell, they even reportedly went into his luggage and helped him try to find a new shirt. But apparently Maxwell was taking the kindness shown by these flight attendants as weakness and it's been alleged that he tried to make some unwanted sexual advances towards them. At one point, Maxwell allegedly groped the breast of a flight attendant who then ordered Maxwell to stop and sit down immediately. A male flight attendant would see the slight and become somewhat agitated himself, approaching Maxwell and aggressively telling him to calm down. And this resulted in Max allegedly punching the flight attendant in the face. Hey, 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 hey. Naturally, this was the straw that broke the camel's back, and all the flight attendants moved in to subdue this individual. As I mentioned earlier, there's no place that you can really securely store this guy on the plane, so what they did was bust out the duct tape and start wrapping Maxwell up, essentially, you know, confining him to his seat. They began wrapping Max up like a mummy as other passengers watched and laughed at his expense. The man yelled and squirmed, begging people to help him, but no one was willing willing to move a finger for this asshole. People pulled out their phones, filmed the guy, and Max spent the rest of this flight uh, wrapped up in tape. Help! This man got the right dentist, that's all I'm going to say. Dennis is point. <laughs> when the flight landed in Miami, Maxwell was arrested and charged with three misdemeanor counts of assault. The Association of Flight Attendants had this comment regarding the situation, quote, a drunk and irate passenger verbally, physically, and sexually assaulted multiple members of the crew. When he refused to comply after multiple attempts to de-escalate, the crew was forced to restrain the passenger with the tools available to them on board. We are supporting the crew. And I know there might be that one guy out there that's like, well, wrapping him up in duct tape, that's a little bit much, isn't it? Nah, fam, like, you can't be groping flight attendants' breasts, punching dudes in the face, if there's nowhere to put this guy, your ass is getting wrapped up, bro. An interesting side note to this story is that Maxwell Berry was a recent graduate from Ohio Wesleyan University, where he was the recipient of the Action Award from his Greek community. And from what I understand, this award was given to people that were a part of the college community that broke the mold of Greek life stereotypes in college. So basically, they gave it to him because he wasn't like a stereotypical frat douchebag. Well, considering the behavior showcased on this flight, 
point, they might want to reconsider giving him that. The university would comment on the situation as well. Ohio Wesleyan is saddened to learn of this situation with one of our graduates. The case does not involve the university and the incidents depicted do not reflect Ohio Wesleyan's values. In May of 2022, Maxwell Berry would eventually plead guilty and was sentenced to serve 60 days in jail with one year of supervised probation. He was also ordered to pay $500 in fines and $1,500 in restitution to his victims. The man later issued statements claiming he took responsibility for his actions and he would apologize to all involved. Another infamous duct tape incident caught on camera involves what some might describe as a crazy Karen. On July 6th of 2021, on American Airlines Flight 1774 from Dallas to Charlotte, North Carolina, a female passenger had a complete meltdown, standing up from her seat mid-flight and she began screaming that she needed to get off immediately. The woman would barrel through the aisles, banging on doors around the plane, and continuously muttering about how she needed to escape. The woman was scaring people on the flight, so flight attendants charged her. When attempting to detain the erratic woman, she allegedly bit one of the flight attendants. But despite the woman chomping about, they were eventually able to detain her. They managed to get her in handcuffs on the plane, but just as she got cuffed, she had a second wind of energy and started going on another rampage. While handcuffed, the woman managed to bite, spit at, headbutt, and kick at various airline attendants. Eventually, though, they would tire this woman out and manage to get her back in a chair, and that's when they busted out the tape and started wrapping her ass up. And these flight attendants went to the next level, wrapping not only her torso area, but also taping her mouth off. Footage later uploaded to the internet would show video of this deranged woman screaming with duct tape on her mouth. Once this flight landed, the woman was immediately taken to the hospital for evaluation. From what I understand, this woman was never given any criminal charges. It appears that maybe this was more or less a mental break. But she was fined. In the wake of the incident, the duct tape woman was fined $81,950 by the Federal Aviation Administration. To this day, the woman's identity remains anonymous. And with those two stories explained, I hope it's now clear to you that if you mess with flight attendants, your ass is gonna get wrapped up. One of the more controversial practices engaged in by airlines that has become more prominently known in recent years is the process of overbooking flights. It's somewhat standard in the airline industry for companies to sell more tickets for a single flight than there are actually physical seats available. This is done to account for the fact that statistically each flight will have a passenger or two that don't show up. So airlines take advantage of this and sell an extra ticket or two per flight to basically maximize their profits. But what happens in these statistical anomaly situations where Literally everyone who bought a ticket shows up for the flight. Yeah, now you're in a situation where there's not enough seats to go around and somebody has to be compelled to get off of the flight, essentially being screwed by the airline for doing absolutely nothing wrong. One of the most viral pieces of air rage footage occurred from a situation like this. It's one that many of you are familiar with. It happened in 2017 and involved a doctor being dragged off of a flight after being brutally beaten by airline security. This is the controversial story of Dr. David Dow. This story begins on April 9th of 2017 on United Airlines flight 3411. Just minutes before the plane was to depart, airline employees boarded the flight to break some bad news to passengers. They were asking for passengers to volunteer themselves to deplane as the flight was overbooked. They had sold more tickets than seats that they actually had available. They had to have a couple of extra seats for flight attendants and, well, they didn't have the seats that they needed to take off, basically. Initially, passengers on this flight were confused by the request. They likely thought, how can a flight even sell more tickets than are possibly available? That just didn't make much sense to them. 
And they're right about that. It is stupid. Nobody was budging. Nobody was getting up volunteering themselves. As airline workers began to realize no volunteers were stepping up, they added in some incentives to the deal. A $400 travel voucher, a hotel stay, and a seat on a flight leaving 21 hours later was offered to anyone who would voluntarily give up their seat at this point. But they had no takers. Negotiations continued to escalate, with now a $800 travel voucher being offered for anyone who would volunteer to get off. But again, no passengers felt like it was worth it, and to be honest, most of them were outraged at the notion entirely. It almost became a matter of principle for these individuals to stay seated. But this standoff couldn't last forever. With no passengers volunteering themselves to deplane, the airline decided to pick three passengers people at random and remove them from the flight against their will. Two of the passengers selected complied with directions given to them and did deplane the aircraft. However, there was another that just wasn't having it. That was 69-year-old Vietnamese Chinese American David Dow. David Dow, a medical doctor, was from Elizabethtown, Kentucky, and was a former folk musician that turned to medicine. Dr. Dow was a pulmonologist and had patients that he needed to see the following day. And because he had these patients, he wasn't going to be able to miss this flight. He had to be there. At least that's what he thought. A totally valid reason for not wanting to get off of this thing. When approached by airline staff, David would not listen to any reason from them, and United was forced to take drastic measures to get him off, calling the Chicago Department of Aviation Security. The man was confronted by a small army of security, and at this point, knowing something was about to pop off, passengers pulled out their cell phones and began recording video. Video recordings show Dr. David Dow surrounded by security on his phone, apparently on the phone with with United Airlines corporate to plead his case to them. The phone negotiations apparently went nowhere. And after giving Dr. Dow some time, seeing that he wasn't going to move, that's when security tries to go in and forcefully eject him from this plane, and it just gets ugly for all involved. When security was trying to get a hold of the man, Dr. David Dow struck his head against the armrest and was bloodied up and bruised as a result of this. He was dragged out of his seat and dragged down the aisle by security. Those who had witnessed this bizarre confrontation even claimed that it looked like the doctor had lost consciousness after being roughed up by security. Can't they run a car for the pilots and have them drive? Ah! Dr. David Dow's ejection from the flight sat well with nobody on board because the entire premise of having to, you know, deplane in the first place was so silly and stupid to them. Why is this innocent man getting beat up as a result of your mistake of overbooking this flight? Several passengers were extremely distressed by the incident and decided to deplane as a result of it. Adding to the disgust of the passengers, some have reported that the officers responsible for pulling him off were laughing shortly after the incident. And this entire confrontation isn't even over yet. As just when United thought they had gotten everyone off the plane that they needed to, out of nowhere, Dr. David Dow rushed his way back onto the plane with blood pouring out of his mouth, repeatedly saying that I have to go home and quote, just kill me. I have to go home. I have to go home. I have to go Just kill me. Just kill me. Kill me. Just kill me. I have to go home. Kill me. Just kill me. Just kill me. Just kill me. go home. I have to go home. I have to go home. The man would collapse into his seat and was deplaned again, this time for good. David was promptly taken to the hospital. He suffered a broken nose, loss of his two front teeth, and a significant concussion. According to the man's lawyer, these injuries required reconstructive surgery. This footage would soon after be published to the internet and almost instantly go viral, as many news outlets would report on the mishandling of the situation by United. It wouldn't be long before the majority of the criticism online would be pointed straight at the airline for not only the violence, but the ridiculous proposal of asking passengers to deplane due to workers not having seats because because the airline overbooked it. A lot of folks felt like this was a selfish move on the part of the airlines, and the violent aftermath was simply the cherry on top that led to the criticism being put in the spotlight. 
Some online even argued that Dr. Dao was targeted because of his race. Mainland Chinese and Vietnamese citizens began to boycott United Airlines as the hashtag Chinese Lives Matter was invoked. The price of United Airlines stock also dropped the following days, showing how much this incident had affected them. Many online were posting about how they were canceling their United Airlines flights and would refuse to use them in the future. The situation had become a complete disaster for United Airlines and inadvertently exposed the entire airline industry for this overbooking shit. But despite all of this backlash, it didn't immediately look like United even felt bad about what had happened. On April 10th of 2017, in an email to employees, United CEO Oscar Munoz applauded and defended his crew's actions, proclaiming that the passenger was disruptive and belligerent. However, this tone would change a bit when Oscar spoke publicly. Oscar, who described the man's actions as belligerent in private statements while well, he was going around saying that what happened to Dr. Dow was horrifying in public statements quality CEO right there, guys. The pinnacle of integrity. The airline would later apologize to David Dow for what had happened, and the CEO would take full responsibility and personally apologize, promising that the company would do better. What did you think when you saw that video of a man being dragged off of one of your planes? It's not so much what I thought, it's what I felt. Probably the word ashamed comes to mind. You know, as I think about our business and our people, um, the first thing I think is important to say is to apologize to Dr. Dow, um, his family, uh, the passengers on that flight, our customers, our employees. That is not who our family at United is. And you saw us at a bad moment. And this can never, will never happen again on a United Airlines flight. In an effort to remedy the bad PR, United Airlines also elected to compensate all passengers that were on the same flight as Dr. Dow. David Dow was seen as quite the sympathetic figure in the media, and many would reach out with support for the man. On April 11th of 2017, the law firm representing him put out this statement. The family of Dr. Dow wants the world to know that they are very appreciative of the outpouring of prayers, concern, and support they have received. Currently, they are focused on Dr. Dow's medical care and treatment. While Dr. Dow was healing, his daughter would speak publicly to the media, telling them that her and her family were horrified, shocked, and sickened by what had happened, but they remained hopeful in his recovery. What happened to my dad should have never happened to any human being, regardless of the circumstance. We were horrified and shocked and sickened to learn what had happened to him and to see what had happened to him. Now, it probably comes at no surprise to you guys that there was going to be a civil lawsuit component to this situation, and you might be pleased to find that a settlement was reached that reportedly favored Dr. Dow. On April 27th, Dr. Dow and United Airlines reached a confidential settlement. The exact figures of what was exchanged isn't publicly known. However, one of the terms that was released publicly was an agreement within the settlement that stated Dr. Dow would not sue the city of Chicago as the city was somewhat responsible for the security that ended up beating his ass up. In the wake of this, United Airlines would announce 10 policy changes, which included raising the maximum amount of travel vouchers up to $10,000 and a $1,500 no questions asked fee for permanently lost luggage, as well as promising to reduce overbooking. Despite them trying to avoid any repercussions, this incident would have some impact on the Chicago Aviation Police. On June 29th of 2017, the Chicago Department of Aviation Police were decertified, and the agency was no longer a police agency and were now officially regarded as nothing more than a security force. And finally, to wrap things up, we get to Dr. David Dow's first public appearance following this, an appearance that didn't occur until two years after. Two years following the incident, David Dow would do an interview with ABC News. In the interview, he spoke about the footage, relaying that every time he watched it, he just cried. Have you watched the video? Later on. What's that like to watch? I just cried. You can hear you screaming in pain. I, I don't know, I just cried. When asked how he handled the attention and scrutiny, Dow claimed that he didn't handle it well at all and stayed in his home for months at a time, feeling depressed. How did you handle all of that attention? 
get the point I have to hide him. Could you go to work? Could you I leave can't. the house? I, no, no. I stay for months, months in the house. The man would later go on to say that he was pleased with the changes that the airline made and that he had forgiven the company for their past action. The most important thing is the accident turned out the positive way. Airline business willing to change policy. You forgiven? Yes. David also said that if he ever came face to face with any of the security officers that removed him from the flight, he wouldn't be mad at them and would let bygones be bygones. He said that the guys were just doing what they were told. What would you say to those men who pulled you off the plane if they were sitting here? I'm not angry with them. They have the job to do what they have to do. If they don't do it, they may lose the job. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not angry with them or anything like this. That's their job. Hopefully the part about them laughing afterwards wasn't true, but anyways. Dr. David Dow has moved on from this incident. He's since retired from the medical field and now works with charities around the world. And well, you've made it to the end. Let me know what you guys thought about this video down below in the comments section and let me know who or what you want me to talk about next. I want to give a major shout out to my patrons. I appreciate you guys. Wavy Web Surf out. Peace. <laughs>